Data-based individualization, or DBI, is a research-based process for individualizing and intensifying interventions through the systematic use of assessment data, validated interventions, and research-based adaptation strategies. DBI is designed to support students with the most severe and persistent learning and behavioral needs, including students with disabilities. During the first year of our, um, our state, our systemic state improvement plan, um, the group of stakeholders determined that um, one of our target areas of students with disabilities, specifically uh, those students that were struggling in reading uh, at the third grade. So it was determined by the stakeholder group uh, as well as the Wyoming uh, planning group that we would choose data-based individualization as the intervention or innovation to, to benefit those students. So initially in the pilot year, which was uh, the 16-17 school year, um, they sent out an open call uh, basically to districts throughout the state um, and took volunteer teachers. Uh, we had approximately four teachers and I believe six students uh, in that first pilot year uh, for DBI. The second year we had approximately 14 teachers in the process with 22 students in the second year. We brought together a stakeholder group again and we talked about how we could uh, retool or refine the implementation model so that we would essentially get more bang for our buck. Um, and what we had decided to do is work individually with districts rather than doing an open wide or an open call statewide, we would work with the districts, which we found um, Laramie County uh, School District number one was uh, ultimately decided to be our target district. And one of the biggest reasons why is because they held the largest in size or size of number of students that would have fit our, our state identified measurable result. So our teachers had been asking for resources and materials and tools to help them really dig deep in those specialized instruction areas to engage students in their skill deficit areas. They've, they've questioned for a long time, how do we find these interventions? Like we know the kid has a skill deficit in this area, but how do we find something that targets that? Um, in their box of tools was a lot of the same general education materials um, that, that they, they'd been given from the district. So initially we provided training, uh, which we do in two parts. Um, we look at uh, the selection of interventions uh, and the intensification of those interventions. The second part of the training that we provide to uh, the district staff deals specifically with progress monitoring and how to apply that uh, to, to benefit the students. We also provided uh, coaching. So within the Department of Education, we um, trained six uh, coaches to work within the district and uh, we go out and work with the teachers directly. Ultimately, we did end up uh, supporting the district by helping them select or identify and train coaches internally to kind of help sustain with that sustainability as we move into the second year of implementation with them. My role as a DBA district coach has been to um, sit with the newer teachers that are trying to implement DBI. I've gone into other um, schools to help other resource teachers with the process. I try to encourage them as they try to um, go through this structure. Just getting to know them, uh, getting to know the systems that they have set up in their classroom. I try to get, if they ask me questions and I don't have the answers, I try to find resources and answer that for them. Selecting the right intervention tool with them and tracking their progress along with them. We're, we're looking at their data and seeing if what the data is telling us. Is, it, is the intervention working? Is it not? What can we do differently? I offer it, any help. Um, that I can. Um, I also give it examples of my, um, my journey as I've gone through DBI and uh, try to let them know that I'm just available and there to help them. So just the support from the state especially in coming up with a, a block of money for instance to say here here's your mentor teacher money so that you can compensate those teachers a little bit for the extra that they're doing in coaching their colleagues that was a huge piece of it as well.
CBI implementation has impacted how I teach in a, a very strong way. It's taken all good teaching practices that were already in place and magnified them. The goal, obviously, of special education is to get those special education students back into the gen ed classroom, and I feel like DBI has given me the push and the support um, and the confidence to be able to say that my students are growing. And all those gut feelings that I have are now validated, or I can see them in the data. Or if they were a gut feeling that was inaccurate, I now know what the root of the problem is and I can help that child succeed. I've been able to really hone in on where the child is struggling. It has made me become a more thorough and thoughtful educator. I'm picking specific skills that I want kids to pr progress on. I am choosing um, very specific targeted goals from norms, and I'm able to reflect on how they're doing related to those norms. I'm able to specify where that's happening, whether through the log I see that the student is in engaged with me, if I see that the student um, is missing a lot of instruction, I'm able to find specifically what needs to be intensified, focus my attention there, and make that change. I'm listening more to their likes and dislikes. It's purposeful, it's meaningful, and they're present. DBI has really given myself and the teachers that I work with and the students that I work with the same language. And I think it empowers the students to come forward and say, I need to improve in this area in order to meet my goal. And this is my sheet. When the dots are going up, you're doing good and better. My goal is to try and stay on the line and read as much words as I can in a minute. And I, my goal also, I'm trying to get up to here. They understand the importance of what they need and how they're progressing and how they learn you know, the best. Um, and I think it's really improved my relationships with students, being able to talk to them about um, where they can improve and then have those same conversations with parents and other teachers. They come home and, and look what we got. We got high scores and, and they flash their papers at me and especially during the meetings whenever I come to, to get an update on them and, and things like that. It's, it's amazing to see their progress their confidence, they can talk to me and, and, and know what they're talking about. They, they, they know what they're doing now instead of just guessing or, or mimicking their older sister or mimicking their, me and their dad. It, it's amazing. Because they're excited, it's empowered teachers. Um, man, and that, that just splashes out on their kids. It makes me feel really happy and proud of myself and it's fun because I can always talk about it and I'm not really always being bullied and saying like, ha hey, ha, you don't know how to read, because I do know how to read. And those kids, um, are growing, I'm, I'm able to say, like, your kid's back on grade level, and for parents to hear that, it's, it's been exciting. We've seen some amazing results um, with the students that we've been working with, with database individualization. A number of the students uh, that we've worked with have either, A, been exited from SPED, or uh, another uh, group of students we've seen actually move to the, the next least restrictive environment. The best story I have right now is a little second grader that last school year I was we were lucky to be able to attack five words from her high frequency words list and this quarter for third quarter she attacked 95 words and I am about one or two data points away from him meeting his goal and we're having a discussion now with mom about ex exiting him from special education services I've had one of my students exit special education because of the process and because of the data that I had. And I think that was such a fantastic experience to be a part of. I've never had a kiddo um, exit special education for so for to have this experience is so exciting. <laughs> I 
We've expanded into two child development centers here within the state, and they've started implementing this year, and we're already seeing some pretty significant growth from both of those sites. We um, picked one um, area to target, and that was pre-literacy. With the tools that I've been given through the DBI process, I've been able to really hone in on where the child is struggling and do a better job of not only the explicit instruction for them and their targeted needs, but following through with the progress monitoring and showing that data and having those graphs and charts to say, this is where we were and this is where we are now. DBI has improved our teaming process. The DBI teaming process um, has put in, for us, has put into place a very um, efficient, timely, systemic way that we talk about our kids. It gives us a lot of good in-depth data to then go back and problem solve and say, this is what I need and I'm not sure how to get there. And then in that process, all of the team is coming together and asking those questions and helping problem solve. So we plan on continuing to support the state in the implementation of DBI. Uh, number one, we've partnered with our Region 5 BOCES, which is on the western side of the state. Uh, Wyoming is so, so large that it's hard to service every geographical location from the southeast, which is where the Department of, Ed is uh, Department of Ed is located. So we've expanded and partnered with them to provide additional trainings for those teachers on the side of the state, as well as follow-up coaching supports, much like we do uh, from within the department itself. Um, we've also uh, been working with University of Wyoming. We've been working with the University of Wyoming um, in looking at uh, redoing their pre-service uh, teacher curriculum, um, as well as developing a professional development model for in-service teachers to uh, learn and take part in DBI, as well as earn micro-credentialing. I always loved Ross Green's quote, kids do well if they can. And I think the bottom line is teachers do well if they can. If they're given the supports and tools to do what they came into the, this profession to do, which is to close the, the gap on our most at-risk students, um, they're happy, the kids are happy, our parents are happy, and uh, it, it just is a really positive thing. What DBI has allowed us to do is shine the light on one kid at a time say this kid is progressing, this is how we're doing it, and then share that knowledge, which is just generally good instruction, but very specifically with um, the behavior intervention teams, our principals, and the district. So it's really, I think, ignited the passion for our special ed teachers because they get to do what they do well anyway. It just gives them a toolbox to do it, um, and a formula, a process that really works well. Because when it's implemented with fidelity, it produces outcomes. I mean, that's honestly the biggest reason why I've, it's, I've bought into it uh, myself personally, and I've seen it affect not only teachers, but also students uh, in a very positive manner. If any district or school would be interested in implementing data-based individualization, they should contact the Division of Special Education Programs within the Wyoming Department of Education, and we can get them set up with the appropriate training, standardized tools, and follow-up coaching supports.